Praise the Lord, church. David, a man after God's own heart. What made David a worshiper was that he had a heart after God. And I just want to start out this morning with a good scripture of praise. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Let's just give God the best praise we can today. So let's stand and let's worship the king right now. Let's give him a praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting us be in this place today. God, you've moved the mountains. You have given us what we need in this place. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your spirit that leads us and guides us. Thank you for doing everything that you've done, oh Lord Jesus, for our lives, for our homes, for giving us happiness and a hope for the future, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy that is new every day, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Lord God, and I lift you up and I magnify you. I look to you, Lord Jesus, because I know that you are where my help comes from. I thank you, Jesus, for taking me by the hand so many times and leading me through the deepest and darkest of places. But not only there, Jesus, but you have been with me on the mountaintops. I thank you, Jesus, for being a friend to me, being one that is closer than a brother. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of all the praise and the glory and all the honor in this place. Bless him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's give him a head clap. He's done a good job. He's done the most wonderful job that there ever could have been. He died on the cross for you and me. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. And there is victory in this place because of his blood. You can see past yourself. You have more potential than you believe that you have in this place today. And it is because he has died for you. He doesn't look at us because of what we are, but he looks at us in the way that we see that he sees us. And we thank him for it today. In Jesus' name. Move the mountains to the wind and waves be still. Cast out demons, with the empty soul we fill. Now there's breakthrough, now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power, and the keys to do the same. For redemption, may the accusers drop their stones, showed us
Amen. 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 And with that being said, there are uh, some prayer requests that are needed to be brought forth. Sister Kathy continues to pray for her. Also, uh, Sister Debbie needs a continual prayer. Yeah. We serve a healing God, right? Amen. With this crazy thing going on with COVID, there's a few that already had it, but all in all, 100%, God has brought us for, through this problem. Yes. This world problem, God has brought us through. We have all had different opinions, but we know one thing that is a matter of fact. God is king, yes. and God is in control. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Let, let's pray for our, our state. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our world as well. Yes. That God will continually, continually move yes. mountains. Let's do that right now. Father, we praise you and thank you today. We are excited to be here in your presence, Lord Jesus. We are thankful, Lord God, to be have an opportunity to express our love, to express our heart, to express our minds. Where we appreciate who you are. We appreciate, Lord Jesus what you've done. We appreciate what you're about to do because, God, we believe revival is in the atmosphere. Revival is about to take place. Revival is going to happen whether we are a part of it or not. I want to be a part of it, Lord Jesus. God, there are many, many requests we can bring forth here today, Lord Jesus. We can spend hours in this segment of prayer, Lord God, but God, we are believing in in this thing called prayer because it is beneficial and important, Lord Jesus. Beneficial to where we can communicate with you, God, with our, our, our things that are on our, on our mind, God. We can clear our mind and heart and focus on you. God, there are many things and situations that are, can be brought forth. Those that are in the hospital, those that are at home for uh, multiple things, Lord Jesus. Different things, Lord God. Look, uh, physical and spiritual, Lord Jesus, whatever the case, God, you see where they're at. You see the need in them, Lord Jesus. You see the need here in this place. For there is, if we are uh, honest with ourselves, each and every one needs you, Lord Jesus. Here in this moment, in this time, in this atmosphere, is the healings can take place. Healings can take place in this type of atmosphere. This type of move of God, of miracles can happen, Lord Jesus, those healings, Lord, those, those, those change of minds, those change of hearts, Lord Jesus, can happen in this place right now, in this, in this place, in this time, Lord. We are thankful. We are grateful, Lord Jesus, for an opportunity just to be close to you again in one mind and one accord. We can set aside our differences. We can set aside our opinions and know exactly who the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is because our scripture says so. Our Bible says that you are in control of each and everything. And we can set aside each and every other opinion because fact is fact. And the fact of the matter is we are thankful here today. As we gather in this place and we continue worshiping you, Lord Jesus, we continue songs, oh God. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to take control of this, this service. Take complete control of the service, Lord Jesus. God, there are those here in this place that are just bubbling inside of them, not knowing what they're going to do, what they want to do, Lord Jesus. Let them know, God. And yes, this is an apostolic service. You can get in the center aisle. You can get in the outside aisle. And, and you can magnify him however you see fit. In the name of Jesus. Like the old time Pentecost. God, we love you. Every hand raised, every eye closed. Let's thank him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Let's talk to him right now. I appreciate you, Lord, for all that you've done. All that you're doing, Lord Jesus. Here today, melt hearts. Here today, soften hearts. Here today, Lord Jesus. Lead, guide, direct decisions. Whatever the case may be. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, allow your inner man, allow your inner man to speak right now. Your inner man, the Holy Ghost, allow him to speak right now. In the name of Jesus, God is moving in this atmosphere. He's moving in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we know, we know as this service moves forward, Lord Jesus. We know, God, that you are going to have complete control. Glorify your name. Yes, church. There's more to come. If you're attentive, there's more to come. Your love, lead us 
kind of a subject matter what I'm going to minister here today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. You can sit down. That's fine. It says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Did you hear what he said? This is Paul writing to the Thessalonians. He said, at the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord is so come as a thief in the night. And for when they say peace and safety, that sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon pregnant women. And they shall not escape. They shall not escape. Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Almighty God. Lord God, that you would help us. And Lord, that we, we, Lord God, would know and be sober at the hour that we live in. Lord Jesus, that you would help us, dear God, do the things that we need to do. Lord Jesus, we praise you, Almighty God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord Jesus, we know, Lord God, that you are well able, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, to, to, for your goodness and your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, yeah, we didn't do the offering. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Dunn got so excited, we didn't, he forgot the offering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's just come up and brethren and, and uh, let's give, let's pray that the Lord would bless. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would bless this offering. Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would touch hearts to give as we ought. And Lord Jesus, we know that you are coming soon. Yes. Lord God, let Lord Jesus there be, uh, Lord, the spirit of sacrifice and desire, Lord, to give, Lord, in this last hour. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. While I'm doing this, you can take care of that. And uh, it, it says here, but concerning the times. And the seasons, he didn't have anything to say to them other than you should know it. The Thessalonians were, uh, how can I say, a bit more uh, in tune with the things of the Lord. Okay? And the scripture lets us know that Paul was only there for basically three weeks. In Acts chapter 17, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and uh, three Sabbath days reasoned uh, with them out of the scriptures. Okay? So for three Sabbath days, he established a church in three weeks. Thessalonica. Okay. Uh, this was, why was this? There was, there seemed to be some hierarchy of churches early on in, in, the, in the ministry here. And uh, going to Thessalonica, that was Berea and Thessalonica. These two churches were seen to be churches that how can I say, rivaled one another in strength and ability uh, and those who got the message and, and, and uh, uh, were able to run with it, okay, in a short period of time and establish, uh, you know, establish a work in three weeks. God was already moving there. God was already doing things there. There were people already uh, in that area, but uh, to establish leadership in that church in, in three weeks. That's amazing. 
That's a miracle. That's nothing more than a miracle. Anybody that's, uh, you know, uh, tried to go into an area and start a church, they're going to tell you that, you know, if you're going to think you're going to get it done in three weeks, you better have a word from the Lord about it. Because it doesn't happen that way. And, uh, and our changing world today has come to a place where uh, we are we are at the precipice of the time and the season uh, of, of this. And so they were prophetically tuned in. They were aware, okay? Uh, Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians in that they searched the scripture daily, whether those things were so. And so here is, here's the thing. These rivaling churches were there and they were, uh, uh, I mean, they were rivaling against one another, but Thessalonica was picked out. And the reason it's picked out is because how it accelerated. And I want to tell you, in this day and hour, I believe that one of the, re I don't think it's a coincidence. Listen to me. I don't think it's a coincidence for Paul to be sharing these things about the end times with the Thessalonican church. Because I believe that in the end times, uh, there is going to be things established just like Thessalonica. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hear me. This is not, this wasn't God trying to you know, this wasn't Paul trying to impress the Thessalonians. This was this was not by chance. This was by the hand of God. Okay, uh, Paul was moved on by the the Holy Ghost. In other words, to write this letter that it would be a prophetic message for the whole church for the time of the whole church age. Just imagine that, uh, you know, you know, 1950 years ago, that this thing has, you know, uh, this has happened. Well, it might probably be 1970 years ago, if you get it right. But in this thing, he is saying, listen. Okay, he is giving prophetic word for the hour. I don't think he's just ministering to Thessalonians. He's ministering to a church that is that is going to happen. Okay, that in the future. This is the nature of things. That God is going to do a quick work. And he's going to do it amongst us. And we're going to see, uh, we're going to see some things that we have not seen before. And of course, uh, everybody's been talking about what Brother Bernard had preached and, 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 and said about the hour and, and all this. And, and that has not been done in secret because God has given it to the hearts of many men. Right, amen. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. I told you not too many weeks ago that we would that there is more coming. Yes. That what we see with COVID is not the end. Okay, why? why? Why did that happen like this? Because God is confirming his word. God is confirming a prophetic message. God is, uh, he is doing it for our sakes. Oh, hallelujah, he's doing it for our sakes. He's doing it for the church's sake. He's saying, listen, get yourself ready. He's saying, listen, 
this is time to, this is not time to falter and, and, and all this. The coming of the Lord is something that the church is supposed to look forward to. It is not something that we are to get nervous about. It is something that we should be living for. In other words, our life should reflect what the coming of the Lord is going to mean to us. In other words, we're getting out of this world. We're going to be with the Lord Jesus. We're going to be able to worship and not stop because we're not going to be limited by our flesh any longer. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. How would you like to feel the presence of the Lord? Oh, and more and more. In Ephesians, it tells us that in chapter 1, okay, that we have received the earnest of our inheritance, the presence of the Lord, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the glory that we feel is only a small portion. Can you imagine what that, I tell you what, I have felt the presence of the Lord and I've told to people before that I felt like I could run through that wall and run up the wall and cross the ceiling. Why? Because it's just the power and the presence of the Lord. Well, hallelujah. If you just allow that to happen in you, you can do it. Praise God. You just prep yourself. How do you prep yourself? Praise God. Well, you get into the word of the Lord at home. You, you start singing songs and worshiping God. And right. You're having a good yeah. time. Because I want to tell you something. When you come to the house of the Lord, man, you can explode. That's right. Yes. <laughs> not literally. Hopefully not. <laughs> but sometimes details are hidden from us. Brought something with me. Okay. What do you think this is? It looks like a switchblade. Right? Okay. Now, how many would you like me to come up to you? And open this thing right next to you. Why? Because you think. Who's brave? <laughs> okay. We got a brave one right here. Sometimes things appear to be, they're not. That's right. That's right. True. Amen. So true. I thought this would be a, just a good visual lesson. Yes. We were fearful because it looks exactly like a switchblade. That's right. And it basically is, but it's got a comb in it. Okay? It's the details that make the difference. Yes. Amen. When you know the details and you allow those details to get into your heart and soul, okay, you're no longer afraid, okay, of this. Oh, this is useful. Okay? This is, this is something. I take the lock off. I said, now you notice that the they're not too long. You know that I don't need very long ones. 
Okay. So, what I'm getting at is, it says, but concerning the times and seasons, bro. The only way that we get to know is by studying it closer. That's right. Okay. If I study this closer, I could see that something's different than what it should be for being a switchblade. Yes. Okay, switchblades are illegal. Okay, they're illegal weapons. He didn't know that. Okay? We can we can be afraid or we can find the word of God and the coming of the Lord be something useful to us. Yes. You hear me? Yes. Now concerning the times and seasons. These Thessalonians were well studied and well taught. Okay? They were people. It was not unusual for Paul to, when he would go to a place, to have meetings, not just uh, that would the, go all through the night into the next morning. It was not unusual for those things to happen. Why? Because the teaching of the Lord to make them understand that they could see it in the Old Testament. That, listen, they understood these things. Why? Because they studied the written word of God. Right. And in that day, the New Testament was not finished. There wasn't a book of Revelation yet. That hadn't come. The exile of John to Isle of Patmos hadn't happened yet. John wasn't exiled to the Isle of Patmos until years later. John went to, was put there to be shut up to be out of touch with the rest of society. But what, you know, here, here you go. He wasn't the only one on that aisle. That's right. And God moves wherever anyone goes. That's right. Praise God. God will move through us and in us. And praise God, in this time that we are coming up against, it's going to be something that is going to be very devastating because the scripture says the day of the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Now, man has his day, but God is going to have his day. Yes. Man is having his day right now. But God is going to have his day. The Lord is going to have his day. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to have his day. There is going to be a time of judgment. There is going to be an unleashing of all kinds of plagues. There is going to be an unleashing of all kinds of, uh, of, of different uh, acts of violence on the earth. There's going to be uh, there's going to be a shaking in the earth, and all kinds of earthquakes and, and all kinds of volcanic eruptions. Yeah. The sea will be almost uh, useless. Come on. And and able to navigate. You hear what I'm saying? What is coming is beyond our experience. It is beyond what we have known before. We have seen some. We have seen some bad hurricanes in the last in the last uh, twenty years. How many remember some of those hurricanes that that hit and uh, you know it did a lot of devastation. 
Uh, some years ago, people were thinking, well, the coming of the Lord is going to happen now. You know, right around 2004 and, and all, all this. And uh, they were expecting, a, you know, because all the hurricanes that we had and how powerful they were. And then, and then we have the devastation that came to Nor New Orleans later. And, and all that was destroyed there. Okay, and how that how that place was uh, it's lower than the, the ocean. They, they got walls to keep the keep the ocean back. You, you know, it's kind of a dangerous place to be anyhow, you know. <laughs> I don't want to be lower in the ocean. That means, you know, if you get a lot of waves, something's going to happen. <laughs> All right. And something did happen. And when it happened, it, it, it caused, uh, you know, it caused great devastation. Something that they weren't, uh, in other words, we can get, uh, we can get waned into where we are just comfortable. We haven't had anything real bad for a hundred years. We're going to be fine. You with me? Well, hallelujah. Listen, my friend, we're coming up and, and we've had we've had things happen here in the United States. But I, I do believe that we are going to see an increase in that cadence because we are, are coming to the end of times. What will happen? I don't know exactly. The Lord doesn't give us every indication. He tells us what his judgment is on this earth. In other words, his judgment overcomes every God. That Israel and that mankind has turned to. They had the gods of the seas and the gods of the land and gods of the air and gods of the sun and gods of the moon. Well, hallelujah. It's true. And there were all kinds of gods and, and people worshipped uh, even different animals and, uh, uh, you know, beasts and, and all these things that have been worshipped. Scripture gives us indication that they are going to be basically wiped out. Why? Because God is showing that he is greater than anything that man has created and has believed that there is God and that the demons of this world have said these are gods and they have given themselves up to be as these gods. These demonic powers. We go into some ancient civilizations that have uh, that were once great in, in the Americas. Uh, you you have to you have to you have to read uh, get a hold of some books. Uh, there's there's one that's been written it's before uh, uh, 1492. It is it is a uh, it's basically the anthropology and uh, uh, the history of human civilizations in the Americas. Listen to me. I want to get this across to you. They had risen. They had risen up to be great. In other words, we have, and you've seen them, the Aztecs, all this kind of stuff. You can, you can see videos and stuff like that, uh, uh, documentaries that you may want to, to look at and all this. But one of the things that they were interested in, in Americans, and uh, even though they built temples to them, was a snake god. 
and that when the sun would come at a certain time in a certain place of the year at the equinox, that that when the sun would move, it would make like the snake coming from the top of their temple where they did the sacrifices down to the earth. That's what it would appear because of the shadows that were uh, that were created by it. That takes a lot of sophistication. That's good. That's takes a lot of math to really actually figure some of that stuff out. That's right. That's right. Okay, because you're not. Oh, we got we got to move the temple oh, about ten inches this way. Okay, guys, push. That wasn't going to happen. I've been down there and seen some of those and actually stood on top of one where the altar was, where they sacrificed humans. Okay? Now, I want to tell you something. They ain't going to move that. <laughs> That's right. Even if they wanted to. Okay? These people were smart, is what I'm getting at. You, you hear what I'm saying? Yes. They had the ability to figure this out, to put it together, to cut the stones far away, and then bring them to the place. It sounds like something right out of the Bible when building the Solomon's Temple. Yeah. Okay? But these people that were disconnected with this you know, uh, with the Eastern world, some believe they were so not connected. But for them to be able to do some of the same things and to build build up, okay, I am telling you and I'm preaching to you here that listen, it doesn't matter how sufficient. Sophisticated we are, how how great we think we are, uh, even though that we are, you know, we go into and, uh, outer space and, and and look at the planets. Listen, my friend, uh, you know that's nothing. God created the whole universe, and we can't even you know, we can't hardly get past ours. That's right. Our solar system. Listen, this God that has created all this. Man should be looking up and saying, listen, whoa. Yeah. Instead, he's trying to find ways to take God out of his factor. That's right. 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 And each time, they find something else. Whoa. Well, let's add another 100 billion years. That'll do it. Okay. All right. When they can't explain it, just add some time. Okay. You think they came up that scientifically? No, it's, you know, it's a bad pizza ice cream. <laughs> Dream. Okay. All right. Get those two together, you you might have all kinds of dreams in the night. They won't be spiritual. Come on. Okay. You still with me? I'm going to be closing here another half hour. But when they cry, peace and safety. Come on. Man. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Well, they're trying to call cry peace and safety in the Middle East right now. They're trying to harness it. They're trying their hardest to, to do it. There's going to be an unexpectedness. In other words, there's going to be pains. It's going to be like a pregnant woman, you know. When that baby comes, it's not, you know. Well, they can plan it today, you know. They can, you know, they can go in and 
do C-section or they can induce labor. But you know, normally when you know when the pains of childbirth come and and uh, you know it's like it's usually at the most inopportune times. You know, ever been there? I'm sure a few of you done that. There's little kids here, so. Okay. It is. It, it comes upon us swiftly. It comes upon us quickly, unexpectedly. We are waiting for it. We know it's coming. So this is what the Lord says. Listen, you can see the sign, okay? You can see the sign of pregnancy, okay? You know when somebody is about ready to have a childbirth because the the size of that baby is no longer the size of a peanut. It has grown in into something that's anywhere from seven to ten pounds. Okay? And that brings the womb out. And there's a sign. It's close. Okay? And, and then the pains come. I want to tell you something. You know, uh, uh, there, you know, without all the uh, epidurals and all the pain medication that they can give you today, all right, to, if you did it just natural way, uh, you know, it, it's very, very painful for a woman to have childbirth. I mean, they're not screaming because it's, hey, hey, how you doing? They're screaming because it hurts. Okay? And so this is the thing. There is going to be agony, but what comes out of it is good. Well, hallelujah. You with me? What comes out of this is good. Yes. What comes out and what's going to happen is good. What comes out, go oh, hallelujah, with the pains. Like I said, I don't know what's in the short future here, but I feel it. Amen. Hallelujah. And it will not be easy. Matthew chapter 24, verse 8, it says, All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. Let's stand. He spoke of the calamities preceding the end times as the beginning of sorrows. Jesus was prophesying and teaching his disciples sitting there at the temple. And there they are. And he is giving them a big word picture lesson. He wanted, the disciples were impressed by the temple. And the disciples wanted Jesus to be impressed by the temple. But Jesus wasn't impressed by the temple. Jesus talked about its destruction. Oh, hallelujah. But he said the beginning of sorrows. Well, we have sorrow and pain right now. Not like it's going to be. Let's get ourselves ready. God will take care of us. Oh, hallelujah. Just like the nursemaid takes care of the woman in childbirth. Just like God breathes life into that baby. You hear me? He is going to take care of us. And he is going to bring life into us. And it is going to happen quickly. Oh, hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, 
Lord, we pray for your goodness and your mercy. We pray, Lord God, that you would touch hearts and souls. We pray, Lord God, that you would minister to our lives. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would open our eyes that we may see. Lord God, that we, Lord God, would know the times and the seasons. That we, Lord Jesus, would see the pregnancy. Oh God, and we would see how far along it is. And Lord, we pray that you would move mightily. Lord, we would see what season it is and, and be aware, Lord, our senses. Lord, God would know what day and hour it is. Lord, God, that we may live closer, Lord Jesus, and make ourselves ready and look forward to your returning. And Lord, God, to the great revival that is going to come and the great catching away during the great rebellion of man. We give you praise, Lord, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Let's just give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Trust in the Lord. Have faith in him. Oh, hallelujah. Let me say it again. Trust in the Lord. Have faith in him. And he'll take care of it. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. For coming. Did we have a good time here today? Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I've been wanting that for a while. This COVID's not going to get us. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise God. We're going to grow, and we're going to be better from it. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. You're dismissed.